Hi, I'm Matt McGemory. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of Illinois for Pioneer. And I want to talk today about winter annuals. We're going to go over some talking points on winter annuals that you're familiar with, things we mention every season. But then I also want to mention a point or two that has really been driven home to me as I look at this location, as I look at other really green fields in the countryside, some things that really just have come home to roost for me. Um, when we talk about winter annuals, we'll go through those previous talking points. You're familiar with the issues. You know, we're talking about competition for moisture, nutrients, light, and space, but that's not really the only issue that comes along with these type of weeds. Chickweed is what we have here, by the way. One of the things that comes along with that is a real practical problem, and that is plantability. All of a sudden, we've introduced something that maintains moisture, something that keeps fields a little bit cooler. That has implications for the crop as it gets started early, implications related to disease, related to insects. But some of that also creates issues with slot closure, with good drop, with uniform depth. What I'm driving at is when we don't control these kind of things out in the field, we introduce variability that compromises that early yield potential. And once we begin to chip away at yield potential, we don't gain it back. That's a downhill slope from planting time all the way to the end of the season. Some other things that come along with winter annuals, yes, they're a pest in their own right, but they also seed other pests. We've talked about this before. Black cutworms, for instance, as moths migrate back up from the south, they're more prone to lay their eggs in green fields to increase the chances of survival for their offspring. When we've talked about these kind of weeds, we've also mentioned that they seed problems with soybean cyst nematode. I can rotate to corn and knock that population of soybean cyst nematode back 30 to 50%. But if these things are sprinkled throughout that field, they happen to be a host plant. They have host plant root material. And that means it begins to kind of negate some of the value I got from that crop rotation. One other thing though, that really, really drives home to me as I look at some of these fields. Yes, in this example, we're killing off these weeds, but these weeds have already produced the seed that will begin to cause us problems next year. They're producing seed right now, even though these plants are dying. They're seeding the problems for the spring of the following growing season. And so if you have a field that looks exceptionally green, that really has got green, we need to have a serious conversation about fall weed control. That sounds a little bit odd to be talking about in the spring, but that's part of the nature of this business. We take notes as we go through the season and think about the things we wanna tweak next time around. This is one of those things we wanna tweak. If your field's getting green, you're seeding that bed, you're creating a really robust seed bed, and we need to have a serious conversation in some of those really bad fields about fall weed control to try to, over time, decrease that weed pressure. What we're talking about is a benefit in fall weed control that just doesn't bring along all those benefits that you and I feel in the spring. They also bring us along benefits for seasons to come and perhaps seeing fewer of these guys out there. Well, thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.